Dan was Jacob's fifth son, whose mother was Bilha, Rachel's servant. Dan was a full brother of Naphtali. Dan is one of the twelve tribes of Israel. Jacob blesses Dan, in Genesis 49, verse 16 to 18. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent in the way, a viper by the path, that bites the horse's heels, so that his rider falls backward. I wait for your salvation, O Lord. Dan is the judging tribe of Israel. The leader, or shepherd, of Israel, also the last worthless shepherd, in Zechariah 11:17, shall come from Dan. Dan is compared to a horned serpent. That is, Dan is as wise as a serpent, with great military power. But not as pure as a dove. The Danites, are a wise tribe. Two top craftsmen, Aoliab, and Huramabi, were Danites. Both were key builders, of the tabernacle and the temple. However, the only named blasphemer, Shalomith, was also from Dan. Dan will be saved at the end. The last worthless shepherd of Israel, in Zechariah 11 16-17. For behold I am raising up in the land a shepherd who does not care for those being destroyed, or seek the young, or heal the maimed, or nourish the healthy, but devours the flesh of the fat ones, tearing off even their hooves. Woe to my worthless shepherd who deserts the flock! May the sword strike his arm and his right eye! Let his arm be wholly withered, his right eye utterly blinded. This last worthless shepherd, before Jesus' return, will buy into Gog's false peace treaty, which breaks down the walls of Israel, for Gog's invasion, that will end, in the battle of Armageddon. When the mighty true shepherd of Israel, the Messiah, arrives. <music>
to deceive their father, by telling him that, they had found the coat of Joseph, dipped in blood. It was also said that, Dan and Gad were in league with, the crown prince of Egypt, against Joseph and Asenath. As early as the days of Moses, the tribe of Dan worshipped idols. Wherefore the pillar of cloud, failed to protect it. And consequently, Amalek smote Dan. Who was the hindmost, and feeble. Because? He feared not God. Being the rearward of all the camps, Dan fell a victim to the fire, that devoured the outermost part of the camp. Because of the idol, which provoked the anger, of Yahweh. It was also Dan's idolatry, which induced Balaam to order altar and sacrifices for the defeat of Israel. Dan's idolatry restrained Abraham in his march against the Babylonian kings and appalled Moses in his vision of the future. The children of Dan taught their sons the idolatrous and the right practices contained in the books hidden under Mount Abram. Samson, the judge from the tribe of Dan, proved faithless, to his knots right. The serpent in Jacob's prophecy for Dan, is referred to Samson. Dan was placed to the north, in the army of Exodus. Dan later moved from the south to the north, where the enemies of Israel reside. Therefore, God's judgment comes first upon Dan. Dan is the first tribe to receive, his portion of land in the Messiah's 1,000-year kingdom on earth. One of the east gates of Jerusalem, where the Messiah is enthroned, is named after the tribe of Dan. However, Dan was omitted, from the 144,000 Jewish evangelists, sealed as the first fruits to Yahweh, and Yeshua. Manasseh, the double portion of Joseph, replaced Dan, in this glorious mission. Because Dan is as wise as a serpent, but not as pure as a dove. Because Dan was compared to a horned serpent. Irenaeus of France, and Hippolytus of Rome, declare the Antichrist to come from Dan, and base it upon Jeremiah 8:16. The snorting of the enemy's horses, is heard from Dan. Irenaeus of France, and Hippolytus of Rome, are clearly contradicting Daniel 9:26. Where the word of God says, the Antichrist shall be a Roman. Daniel 9:26 clearly states that, the Antichrist is from the people, who would destroy God's temple, and Jerusalem. And after the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. A large-scale revolt against a corrupt and vicious Roman reign fails. The Second Temple is destroyed, and the Jews are banned from Jerusalem. Sixty years pass, and Bar Kokhba leads another revolt for the freedom of Jerusalem. But it fails after three years of battle. Jews are banned from the city, renamed by the Romans Aelia Capitolina, in order to eradicate its Jewish heritage. Roman Emperor Constantine converts to Christianity and reinforces the ban on Jews entering Jerusalem. History has proved that the Roman are the people who destroyed God's temple and Jerusalem. Therefore the Antichrist can only be a white descendant of the Roman people because Yahweh has spoken it. The Antichrist is a Jew-hating Roman. He is a Roman descendant. He will fund Islam, to honor the Allah of Muhammad, a god of war and fortress. He will put together a false peace treaty for the Middle East. He will invade Israel at a time of peace. He will kill two-thirds of the Jews in Israel. He will sit in God's temple, the third temple, and claim himself to be God. He will war against the Jew Jesus Christ, at Armageddon. He will be captured, and thrown into hell alive.
J.R. Church, adds his own filth, on top of Hippolytus' Roman lie, to compile his Antichrist bloodline book, for a prophet. What Daniel is saying is that the Antichrist will come out of Roman royalty. Daniel 9.26 says, The Antichrist is a leader of the Roman people, not the Roman loyalty. But then you get over to the next chapter 10. Again, he's coming out of Greek ancestry. The Roman people and the Greek people are one. The Roman people were completely Hellenized. Both Romans and Greeks worship the same Greek gods. In fact, the entire West is Roman Greek ruled. And here's the reason why. The Spartans of southern Greece were mostly politicians. But one of their cousins, Danius by name, fled, took his family with him, and migrated up to the isthmus between the Aegean Sea and the Black Sea and built a new nation called Troy. His city was named Troy. Well, when the Spartans had that ten-year war with the uh, Trojans, Aeneas, a Spartan, his origins were in Sparta, but he was of the royal family, he was the son of Danius. He escaped the burning of Troy, and he went over to Rome and to that peninsula that sticks out into the Mediterranean Sea like a boot, and he produced Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome. How dare J.R. Church mix the Roman filth with the holy word of God? Romulus and Remus were mythical founders of Rome, the twin sons of a Vestal Virgin, and the Roman god Mars, fed by a she-wolf. The she-wolf was from 5th century BC, with figures of Romulus and Remus, added in the 15th century AD, by Antonio Paula Aiello. The Danite, eventually, they moved and disappeared. 1,050 years B.C., they disappeared. 1,050 years B.C., they disappeared. Dan was conquered by Ben-Hadad during Asar's reign, which is from 911 to 870 B.C.E., as recorded in 1 Kings 1520. That is, Dan was still well and alive in ancient Israel, 150 years after 1050 B.C., the time when J.R. Church claims, the Danites disappeared into Greeks and Romans. Let's say Herod's temple. Mm -hmm. We find the, the Danite symbol of an eagle <laughs> sitting right over the door of the temple. I mean, the Danites want that temple. Eagle is the symbol of Rome and Edom. The symbol of Dan is a serpent and justice. The true story. Herod, the Edomite, placed at the main entrance of the second temple, a huge Roman eagle, which the pious Jews saw as a sacrilege. A group of Torah students promptly smashed this emblem of idolatry. Herod had them hunted down and burned alive. And the Antichrist from the tribe of the eagle is going to come and commit the abomination of desolation and lay his claim. To the temple after Judah puts it up and gets it all ready. These fallen angels uh, from, uh, from Mount Hermon cohabited with Danites and the Danites then were infused with the seed of the serpent and they will bring forth the Antichrist. Jesus told us in Matthew 22 30 that angels do not marry. Therefore, fallen angels cannot cohabit with human. According to Ephesians 6.12, angels have no flesh. All fallen angels can do, to make a nephil, is to possess a man, or a woman, during cohabitation. In Judas Iscariot's case, Satan entered into him. He became a Satan incarnate, to do Satan's will. The Nephilim, are demon possessed from the womb. The wicked are estranged from the womb they go astray from birth speaking lies. Satan shall enter the Antichrist, like he entered Judas Iscariot, giving him amazing intelligence and power. That even when the Antichrist claims to be God, and to be Christ, 
the whole world still worships him. J.R. Church, was killed, by the God of the Jews, six months after he published his Satanic Lies. Jacob's prayer, in Genesis 49:18, was answered. The salvation for Dan is here. He has entered the Messiah's 1,000-year kingdom. Let's celebrate Don's salvation, and praise the Holy One of Israel.